thanks for joining me. This is your astrology for April 2016. On the 1st of April, Pluto and the Moon are both in your 5th house of romance and children. And what you're very much going to be dedicated to is working in those areas of your life and really giving all of yourself. So you're focused on other people, you're focused on making those aspects of your life better. And if you do apply yourself in those areas of life, you will affect positive change. So this is a good time for romance straight away at the beginning of April here. On the 2nd of April, Venus starts to conjunct your midheaven, and both of those are in your 7th house of relationship. Okay, so that's positive. Venus is loitering around that midheaven all month, which means that for you specifically, because it's in the 7th house, what you're working on is love and improving your relationships. And not just any relationships, but romantic relationships, relationships where you can give of yourself, where you can be of service, it's a great time for you to make up for past relationship disappointment. If you've always been with guys who took advantage of you or girls who took advantage of you, um, and that's a pattern, this is a great time to actually work at re resolving that pattern once and for all. You've also got your south node of the moon in that sector in Pisces. So you'll notice that some past life stuff may even come up, past betrayals or even past romances, massive romances that were amazing in past lives. You may get visions and insights into those. Do a past life regression. If you're interested, you will get some really, really good stuff from that. It's focused on relationships and romance at the moment. You've also got Neptune in that seventh house, which is the dream of love, the dream of romance. Okay, So everything is pointing towards love and romance here. Um, it's an amazing time for you to bring those things into your life. And if you already have that in your life, by working at it, you can make it even, even better. The moon joins all of that energy on the 4th of April. It joins those planets in the 7th house in Pisces. And the 4th is really a wonderful day where you feel totally connected, totally romantic, uh, very much at peace with yourself and really embodying the energy of romance. It will bring about a lot of change. And so far, everything is pointing towards you, Virgo, having an amazing week if you're single, where you can let your intuition guide you towards finding real passion and romantic bliss in your life. All of that opposes Jupiter and the North Node, which are in Virgo in your first house. So Jupiter is kind of pushing your practical good luck onto all of that. And really, this is a, an awesome time for you romantically. Best of all the zodiac signs so far this month. 10 out of 10 for romance. Really, really good. On the 6th, Mercury goes into Taurus in your ninth house. Uh, Taurus is good for you. It's an earth sign. You can relate. You're an earth sign. You will communicate in a very practical way. And I think around the 6th, you will start to focus on travel. You'll become very interested in broadening your horizons on a practical, physical level. Venus, the planet of love and beauty, also changes gears. It goes into Aries in your 8th house. And it's a, the 6th is going to feel complicated for you because both Mercury and Venus are personal planets and both of them change signs. So you're going to feel like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm like going in a different direction here. Everything's altering, everything's changing. Venus in um, Aries means you're going to love being in charge, okay? Especially in... in um, Working situations where you work with other people, any institutions you're in, you're going to know it all. You're not really going to know it all, but you feel like you will. And you'll want to be in charge and you'll want to be leading and you'll want to tell people what to do. On the 7th, the new moon occurs in Aries and it pulls Aries energy into that 8th house. So you're going to become even bossier. Just remember that if you know what you're doing... And if you're leading people genuinely um, and you boss them around, they'll grudgingly do it, but they won't like it. If you have no idea what you're doing and you think you're the leader and you're the nodal, it will make people angry. People don't like being bossed around by someone who has zero clue. So just be aware of that. Use that energy and that potential to start your own business, to um, focus on what you can do and how you can make your own work better. So really focus on your role your position in the institution rather than the other people around you. That's the, that's the way to use that energy in a positive way rather than create problems and obstacles for yourself. 
On the 9th of April, there's a grand trine in Earth. Again, grand trine being ease and talent, and Earth being your element. Wonderful time for you to travel, and wonderful time for you to have a holiday romance. Wow, so have a look at where's warm on the 9th of April. I'm speaking from someone in, in the UK. What we always look for going on holiday, where in April is warm at this time of year, and then you go there. If you're living in the desert or somewhere where it's hot, then, you know, go to, go to Norway, go to Denmark. Um, or come to England, even. Um, so, it's a great time for you to travel. You'll have lots of fun. The 9th of April is actually a... It's a Saturday. So go away for the weekend. That Grand Trine on Earth actually continues for the next couple of days. It continues... Uh, first happens on the 9th. But then there's another one on the 13th. So between the 9th and the 13th is a really good time for you to have a little bit of a break. Weekend getaway. Really good. On the 12th of April, so the Earth trine lasts until the 12th. On the 12th, the Moon starts to square your Midheaven and Venus in uh, your 8th, and your Moon is in Cancer in your 11th. So what you're really going to be feeling is that um, you can realize your hopes and dreams, and you can perfect your friendships if you take charge of them. And I don't think you're misinformed now. I think taking charge and being someone who takes the initiative in your friendship is actually going to have a positive impact. And if you want to get a friendship back to where it used to be, absolutely you can on the 12th. So if you and your friend have grown apart, if you haven't seen each other for a while, you used to be like this and now you call each other every month, then take the initiative, address it, and you can get the relationship back to where you want it to be. On the 13th, there's a grand trine in Earth, another one. And this, again, is um, between your Jupiter, your Mercury, and your Pluto. So, again, travel, romance, broadening your own horizons, feeling joyful, feeling lucky, enjoying this time of the year, being glad to be alive. It's really positive. You really feel optimistic, enthusiast, enthusiastic, lit up, and like you want to explore and have fun. And that's really nice for you, Virgo. Really good. On the 14th, the moon Sesky squares Saturn, and the moon is in still in Cancer in your 11th, and Saturn here is in the 4th. Mars is also in the 4th. So um, this is a day when you may feel like you need to put some extra effort into your family relationship so that they go in the right direction. People may come to you and say, hey, listen, I feel a little bit like... Um, I haven't been your priority. People may even be a little bit needy and will ask you to be there for them a little bit more. Um, and that, might, that may, might make you feel locked in or like these people are holding you back. I want to go to Ibiza. I don't want to be making cups of tea for my aging parents. Shame on you. You know, that kind of thing. Um, so really weigh that up. Give people what they're asking for. You know, people just want to know that they matter to you, that people who love you and you love, they want to know that you're thinking about them, that you're, um, you're not just going off on your own and having a good time and just, you know, leaving everyone behind. So give people a little bit of um, TLC on this day, especially if they ask you for it. On the 15th of April, there are two grand trines in the chart. Now, one is in Earth and the other is in Fire. Um, and this is an actual ideal time for you to continue to find rom So romance and love and travel for you this month are both 10 out of 10. They're excellent. And that's really where the magic appears in your life. Um, that's really annoying. I, um, I saw something, because I'm a Virgo myself, I saw a thing for a, um, a getaway in Costa Rica at the beginning of April. And um, it was like a Kundalini yoga getaway. And I wrote to them saying, you know, do you have any space left? And they only have shared occupancy. And oh, I can't believe I'm sharing this. But unfortunately, I tend to, um, I tend to snore a little bit. And I really didn't want to put anyone through that. I, you know, I didn't want to... I don't always, first of all, I don't always snow, it's not like consistent, but sometimes I do. And I didn't want to have a shared occupancy because I don't want to put someone through that one, but also I don't want to have the morning conversation. I was like, 
Oh, did you realize you snored last night and it really made me, like, it kept me up and stuff. I don't like that. So, um, I decided not to go because I didn't have any single rooms. But now the child is saying that Virgos traveling will have a wonderful time and can f even find romance. So, I've, I've, yeah, I've not won in this situation anyway. So, where are we? 15th? Yes, so fire and earth. So it's a great time for that romance and travel. And the, the grand trine in fire also means that you're a very good person to um, take charge of your situation spiritually. To discover what your spiritual path is and what makes you feel alive. So spirituality more of, of an internal thing of this is what I enjoy to do. This is what really makes me feel alive. And the 15th is when you can discover what makes you feel alive. So it could be the traveling itself or it could be on your travels that you discover what makes you feel alive. On the 16th, Chiron opposes the North Node. And your North Node is in Virgo, so you're really going your own way. You really feel like you're doing what it is you're supposed to be doing. Again, that gets interrupted a little bit by other people's demands on you, other people's needs for you. And that's the one thing that's been challenging so far this month, and that is the one challenge, is really you're enjoying yourself, you're doing all of these things, but some people need you to be there for them. Okay, So don't hesitate to give of yourself, because obviously the more you give of yourself, the more you get back. The moon goes into Virgo on the 17th. All of that now is in your first house of self. The moon is in Virgo, Jupiter is in Virgo, the north node is in Virgo, um, all in your first house. So the 17th is again a, a day where you feel really, really good about yourself, really at ease within yourself and also like you're presenting yourself well and accurately when it comes to your relationships and who you're engaging with and it feels to me like your relationships work romantically and in general so you really know what practical action to take and when to take it which is really important on the 20th the moon goes into libra and it opposes venus and aries again what you're looking at now is what i love to do and what i want to do and what i'm being asked to compromise especially um, I think now from a working perspective and I think life starts to get more structured and smaller again now it's much more about um, not flitting off to different places every weekend and just having fun and meeting different people but you're being asked to kind of compromise and to make a contribution to others okay so you you have a choice here in April Virgo if you're totally unencumbered and if you're single and you have very uh, small family you can really do what you want um, if you have a lot of obligations you can choose how much of yourself to give to other people and how much to keep for yourself but ultimately either way you decide you're going to have a fabulous month lots of positive times here the full moon occurs in scorpio on the um, 22nd of april and the full moon is in your third house this is a bit of a random day for you because what you'll notice and what you'll find is that you share very emotionally and you're very happy to reveal emotional things about yourself. So if you're, you know, if you're a professional, if you're giving a TV interview, just be careful of how much you reveal uh, because there's a tendency to overshare on the 22nd. On the 23rd and the 24th, the moon opposes Mercury in Taurus. It's still in Scorpio, but emotionally again you feel like you feel a little exposed i think and i think you feel a little bit vulnerable so if you are traveling all the time if you're going to different places or if you're someone who's away from home for the first time it almost feels like there's a there's a sense of um homesickness like uh, um a desire for what used to be, for what was, for what feels comfortable, what feels small. And personally, I feel this is the ego trying to sabotage you and trying to keep you small and is trying to get you to take a step backwards. And your biggest joy and your biggest sense of achievement this month in April is when you move forward. And when you take that homesickness for what it is, which is comfort in the familiar. And it's very important for you to step outside of your comfort zone because the good, wonderful things that are coming into your life aren't there yet and you will only find them if you do step out of your comfort zone. On the 26th of April the Moon and Saturn and Mars they conjunct in your fourth house 
and that kind of creates a T-square with your Jupiter and your South Node and your Neptune, and they, cr cr they create real friction and energy uh, between your sense of self, your relationships, and your family relationships. So this is a very strong day where you can really um, engage with people and to really deepen your relationships so that they feel more personal. So this is the day when you can take an acquaintance and you can turn them into a friend. This is when you can take a date and turn them into a boyfriend, girlfriend. It's when you can make a commitment. It's when you can deepen your relationships and really solidify them as a result of your desires, as a result of your wants. So I really, it, it's not that you feel, Virgo, that you feel like on this day, oh, you know, I, I, I'm feeling trapped. I feel like I have to be more. It's not like that at all. It comes willingly from yourself. It's more like I love this person so much. I want to give them the key to my apartment so that they can come over all the time. Or, you know, I want to um, make my friendship more intimate and personal so that I have someone to rely on when things are tough, things are difficult. So this is really a great day to solidify and improve your relationships. On the 28th of April, so that, um, that T-square, it lasts from the 26th until the 28th. Then from the 28th onwards, Mercury goes retrograde. Boo-hoo, that's really sad because uh, for you, Virgo, this is uh, something. Mercury, Mercury is your ruler and the retrograde in January was a tough one. That was a killer, okay? So this time it's going to be milder a little bit because it's in Taurus. And it's in your ninth house. So basically what that means is that travel, um, th your desire to travel and to flit off everywhere becomes a little bit less. Okay, So you're going to become more focused on your um, immediate environment and moving around in that kind of area. And you're not going to have the desire to kind of um, go here and there and everywhere all the time. So Mercury retrograde always for you is finding alternate ways of getting your point across because it's in Taurus, especially when it comes to practical, physical things, okay? So rather than write letters, you do emails, or if it's contracts, then maybe have them, have them on PDF or something like that. It's very much about um, getting away from the physical, tangible, and, and viewing things and dealing with information in a pure information format that's going to be easier for you. On the 29th, the moon squares Venus. Your moon is in the 6th now in Aquarius, Venus is still in Aries in the 8th. So you're really going to have an idea that really helps the institution you're in, helps the environment and the people you're around and will really put you in a position of leadership because you have a great insight, you have a great inspiration on the 29th that's useful for other people. And finally on the 30th, Venus goes into Taurus in your ninth house. So this offsets your Mercury retrograde because Mercury retrograde is in the ninth. Venus then comes into the ninth as well. It's in Taurus. It is very practical and it allows things to open up. So this is going to be a far less heinous Mercury retrograde like the one in um, January was. It's going to feel a lot less um, traumatic. I mean, the, the January one was really difficult. I want to just mention something that on the 15th, I feel like there is going to be some sort of big event globally. On the 15th of April, I think there's going to be some big news event, something that really um, is quite a dramatic piece of news. And I think on, on, in the outside world, there's going to be a lot of drama and, and big news events. But on a personal level in your life, there's also really going to be the 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 same thing just happening on a personal level do you, do you say what i mean so on the macrocosm the microcosm so what happens on a small personal level also happens on a bigger universal level so you've got the universe and you've got a grain of sand they're both the same thing and what happens in the grain of sand happens in the universe it's the same principle so because something quite dramatic and big happens on the outside world i think in your personal world something is rocked something really wonderful occurs, something that fills you with excitement and optimism and joy. 
and like your life is really taking off. And that's really, um, in April, the underlying fundamental energy I get is excitement and joy and enthusiasm. So I hope that gives you an idea of what you'll be working with. If you'd like a private reading with me, please visit my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab. It shows you the types of readings that I offer. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and I'll speak to you next month.